doing the stories with Briscoe and Bradshaw. I would be Bradshaw, and that would be the WWE Hall of Famer, Oklahoma's favorite son, Mr. Gerald Briscoe. And when you talk about Oklahoma and wrestling, you got to talk about Chuck Hoss, Charlie Hoss, Seton Hall. He set all kinds of records. He's part of the world's greatest tag team. And he imitated me one time that I thought was absolutely terrible. But Charlie Hoss, one of our good friends. Chuck, welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, you, Mr. Layfield. Thank you, Mr. Briscoe. Hey, uh, Charlie, uh, man, it, yes, it, it, it's it's awesome to have have another Oki on here. You don't know how many oh. uh, how many of these episodes I've sat here and I've been totally outnumbered by that Texas and up in up in the corner there. And so it's a pleasure to have somebody right down oh. I thirty five, Edmond, Oklahoma. Charlie Haas of the Haas Brothers, man, what an athletic career, you guys, a legendary from Edmund uh, careers. Tell, t- tell us a little bit about your football and wrestling career when, when you were well, uh, coming. You know, how you ended up, yeah, first of all, I think you went to Notre Dame, then, uh, then you had to go out to Seton Hall. Tell us that, that journey. Okay, then. so, uh, you, know, you know, I went to Edmund Memorial, and that was before Edmund got split. And the uh, the team that I was on, Edmund, uh, Bulldogs that had the uh, we had like TJ Jaworski was on, on my team, um, Scott Schlechter, um, Joey Heckle, Wayne and Brandon Story, the Winklers. I mean, it, it was uh, we were number two in the country, Midwest City, and, Oklahoma. And the, was coach, and the coach was one of my former teammates and a competitor. Yeah, yeah Jim, Jim, Jim Rogers. Uh, Wade Rogers was on my team as well. His son, who went and wrestled with me at Seton Hall, Jim Rogers, who uh, um, he, he wrestled Oklahoma State with you as well, and uh, he went on to coach at Central Oklahoma too. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, that team was number two in the country. Uh, we lost to Midwest City, which was number one in the country, and it was uh, 23 to 22 in the uh, the Oklahoma State dual tournament. Um, but you know, everyone got Division one scholarships off that team. It was a, it was a it was a really good team. Um, when we won states as the individuals, we didn't win the dual state, but we won the individuals. Uh, Edmund has the highest scoring points that year for in uh, in state history, and it still holds the record. Well, so, hey, hey, Charlie, was was any of the Smiths, John or Leroy or Pat, uh, active when you when you guys were on the mound? Uh, so when I was a sophomore, um, I tried out for the Junior National Oklahoma team, and I had Pat Smith and Robbie Haddon. They were seniors, and Robbie Haddon was a three-time state champ as well, and he went on to Oklahoma State. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I uh, think I uh, Pat didn't wrestle Greco Roman, so I made the Greco team as Junior uh, Junior National, you know, for Greco. But uh, yeah, they that, that was my uh, I didn't get pinned by him. Uh, I didn't get teched either. But you know, but it was an ass whipping, dude. <laughs> hey, John, John Pat, I mean, Pat Smith was his four, first four time NCAA uh, a wrestling champion, and his family, of course, is John Smith, a coach at Oklahoma State, two time Olympic champion, six time world champion. His brother, there was a family of what seven Smith. I think five of them were wrestlers, and four of them yeah. were all Americans. Well, then you got. And you got Leroy Smith in there too, that was the older brother. Uh, you know, yeah, Leroy, Leroy, yeah. Leroy saw, started it all. And then then yeah. his his um uh, his Mark. brother-in-law is uh, uh our, our, what is real muto, that catcher, that all-star catcher for the for the Phillies now. Yeah, and then um they also had you know their nephews, uh well then the, the, then the brother-in-law, Mark Perry. Mark Perry, Sr. Perry, Perry, then, Perry brother. Uh, yeah, Chris and Mark. Mark is uh the one Mark is the uh, coach now at over at Arizona State, or he's helping coach at Arizona State. He left Iowa. And yeah, Chris, Chris is Oklahoma State uh, coach. He's at Oklahoma State, State right State. now. Yeah. yeah, I think he'll take. I think he'll be the heir to take over unless they bring Mark Branch down. Maybe I don't know, I don't know if Esposito will like it too well. He's been there a long Espo- time. Esposito's gone. He's gone. Or who, who's the other? Oh yeah, one? no, John. John. John got rid of Esposito to bring in. Uh, no, Guerrero. John got rid of Guerrero to bring Guerrero. in Chris Perry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Esposito might. Yeah. So, uh, you, so yeah, you you had this stellar career in in in, uh, in Oklahoma, yeah. and then you had gotten offered a yeah, yeah. fellowship to we Notre got, Dame. Yeah, we got to Notre Dame, and then they dropped, and that was the, and that was the year Title Nine. They really came down on it, and they they dropped their program at Notre Dame. So. Uh, one, of your, able... one of your existing teammates there was an NFL Hall of Famer, future NFL Hall of Famer, right? Uh, well, who the uh, well, so the ones that JJ McGrew was, went on to back to Oklahoma State to win the national title, uh, and then you had Jamie Downey, you had Marcus Marcus Gowans there as well, and then you had uh, Stephen King. Who was, your heavyweight? Stephen who King. was your heavyweight there? When uh, his, his, he, his name was King at the time, that was our heavyweight, but but Gullick, Gullick was before that. Oh, okay, 
Yeah, Golik was was way was before. Uh, that was like in the uh, 87, 88, because I mine was like ninety one right. when I graduated. Bob Golik or Matt Golik? Uh, I want to say it was Bob. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he was a he was one. Was it both of them do the NFL job? Yeah, they both did the NFL. Mike Golick was there, um, but I think Bob was the one that was the Hall of Famer, maybe. Yeah, I was with Bob in um, L.A. Bob Bob could take his thumb and move it all the way down to down to his wrist because there was not there was nothing holding it attached. I mean, he played defensive line like that. His thumb was literally you could take it and he could move it all the way down to his wrist. Yeah, he had, he had yeah. broken it so many times through all the ligaments. Tough guy. Yeah. yeah. And then Mike went on to be Mike and Mike with uh, on ESPN. And then uh, his uh, his son played at Notre Dame as well. Both sons played at both Notre Dame as well. Main thing, Chuck is Charlie is once once you got a, I always called Charlie Chuck for those that know him. Nobody else does, so it's, it's not like his yeah. name, Chuck. It's just personal joke. So, so main thing, Charlie, once you got a car, you left Oklahoma and moved to Texas, right? <laughs> <laughs> once, once I got a, once I got a scholarship, I left Oklahoma. I went to uh, end up going. Uh, you know, after Notre Dame, we dropped the program. I went to New Jersey, so I was at New Jersey for Seton Hall. And then, um, you know, but I, I, I went. You know, my, my first truck was my first car I bought was a, a Chevy S10 pickup truck, four on the floor. And uh, and I, I would and by that time, my parents they were living in uh, Dallas. Uh, my dad got transferred down there. He was in the government, and so he was uh, he was down there. And so. After all was said and done, I, you know, Texas became uh, home, you know, so. God bless Texas. You hear that, Mr. Briscoe? It was a forced uh, move, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, Charlie, you got to no, no. roll around with, uh, did you roll around with Randy Couture some when he was at, uh, was it Oklahoma? Yeah, so, yeah, so, so when, I, when I was at, um, when I was at Edmond Memorial, I was a junior, uh, sophomore, junior. I, I would drive up, I would drive this university of central Oklahoma. They were, uh, at that time, they were the number two, they were division two national champs and they had a really good team. And I would go in there and wrestle Greg Oplotnik and Howard Moore and get beat up by them. And then we would drive, then I would drive up to Stillwater and wrestle with uh, Chris Barnes and Randy Couture. And Chris Barnes was a two-time national champ. Um, he actually got, only gave up one takedown his uh, junior year and he would actually hammer Couture but I would go in there and just get beat up by them. And uh, that was before John was the head coach. My dad would pay John, you know, we were paying privates to John. So I'd go up after practice, but I'd get there at the end of practice, get beat up by Chris and John, Chris and uh, Randy. And then I would go in and work out with uh, John and uh, Kenny Monday afterwards. So how was Randy then? I mean, he became one of uh, the greatest of all time in UFC. Certainly one of the now, biggest he, legends. He, he would do, he was so nice, really humble. Um, but I tell you, um, you know, you know, the one that was the one that was impressive was Chris Barnes. Um, and Jerry, you can attest to that. I mean, he was a, uh, and, and Randy would just learn from him. I mean, so yeah, Randy was very nice. He'd work with me. He saw that way I was up there wanting to learn, wanting to try. I mean, you know, and I, I mean, I'd take an ass whipping, but I just keep coming back. And, you know, they would, they were, they were very, you know, very, um, oh, they were just very humble, but not only that, but they were just very well respected, but they were just very kind and they would teach a, like a young Poor Oklahoma kid just trying to, you know, trying to learn hit the craft, trying to learn how to wrestle. Charlie, you had some family history at Notre Dame too. What your great grandfather yeah. was uh, with uh, Brockney or one of those? Yeah, it was. It was my. It was my grandfather, uh, Huey Devore. He uh, he was um, he was from uh, Newark, New Jersey, um, and he was uh, he he played for Newt Rockney at Notre Dame, um, and then he went on to coach in the. Uh, he was a two-time uh, head coach at Notre Dame, interim coach Huey Devore. He uh, coached. Uh, after part um after part C, no after party e, and then right before era part C took over um so in uh 45 and 63 and um and he was uh then he went on and coached in the pros as well so he uh head coach at the eagles head coach at the uh, green bay packers um and then uh he did um he finished out his career at the houston oilers as a uh as a defensive uh, lineman coach but uh yeah he also coached seven blocks of granite so uh at, um at Fordham, and that's where he met. Um, he coached uh, Vince Lombardi, and that's where they became good friends. Wow, that's yeah. a pretty impressive family tree you got there, John. Hey, yeah, hey no, Jerry, it, did you ever hear the story when you were in WWE about when we when we almost got thrown out of Notre Dame? So you had a microphone backstage, and people thought it was just a dead mic. And, and one of the guys, I can say who it is, but then I'd be a stooge. One of the guys grabbed the microphone, and he starts making very off-color jokes. You know, just profane jokes you know just joking around about different stuff the mic had a live feed to the arena <laughs> and they came in there and told us about it and they almost shut down the entire show because it was a religious place 
<laughs> can you imagine people in the crowd hearing this voice that uh, they know <laughs> and it's just one bad word after another you're always in trouble aren't you like Phil? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it was not me not it me. wasn't me i've heard that before it wasn't I, me <laughs> as davy said i wasn't even there i wasn't yeah. even there <laughs> Maybe oh, you'd say that while he was there. I wasn't even there. Davey, you're here. I wasn't even there. <laughs> so Charlie, tell us a little bit about Seton Hall. You know, you ended yeah. up out there because of Title IX, Notre Dame dropping the yeah. wrestling program. So. That's why I, I went out to Seton Hall, and it, we, uh, it was, uh, it was, okay, so, you know, it was with the Big East out there. So um, the, um, they, they offered me, they offered me a full ride and full, for a full ride. I, there was it was tuition you know and um so but i didn't cover rumor board um but it was a uh, tuition alone which was which was fine and then i bartended all through you know to pay for my room and board um during the uh during the week on mondays tuesdays and thursdays but no we, but the team was uh we went we became we finished ninth and 13th in the country when i was there uh we won the big east title um and my junior year uh we placed five guys going to nationals and uh dude, it was uh it was a it was a really good you know it was a really great program at the time. Um, I sort of met my brother in law Rick Delegata. Uh, he ended up coaching us a lot, and uh, he went on. I mean, he was you know, he he was you know he he he's. I mean, Jerry, you can attest. I mean, he's a hell of a coach. He was a hell of a wrestler at the time too, back there with Leroy and and uh and so um that's yeah. So I ended up meeting my Charlie, brother in law there. Yeah, Rick uh, Rick's the one that caused me to miss. Uh, John Layfield and Meredith's wedding because he coached my son and my son had never made state and you can testify or you know what 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 a yeah, thrill right. it is if, if your son makes state you got to yeah. be there so John's yeah. wedding I thought you know I didn't have a dream that he was going to place you know and so I, yeah. I committed to John yeah I'll be there and so I sent him to Rick during uh, Christmas holidays he stayed up there 10 days and worked his ass off as, you know, Rick will work, yeah. work, work. And then the kid got so good, he come back and he just walked through and he, he you know, he, he made him walk <laughs> right to go to state so stage. Right and, yeah. and say, Hey man, I'm sorry. And he's still mad at me today. <laughs> I am. Yeah, he he yeah, worked I mean, his Charlie ass was, off though, man. What Charlie, what Jerry told me was, he <laughs> said, I'm sorry, I can't make it. My kid has made their state wrestling tournament, which I did understand. He said, but I promise I'll come to your next wedding. And I said, all right, cool. That's that's long, as long as I know you're coming to the next one. <laughs> and hopefully there won't be a next one. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, well, Jerry, Jerry did come to my wedding, and uh, it looks like I'm, maybe someday I will have the next one. I don't know. <laughs> so that didn't end very well. But you so, got my yeah, warning, I'm Charlie. I'm sorry. Now, I'll, so. I'll send. I'll send a gift. All right. I know. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, I'm glad he didn't I, come I, to my I, wedding. Uh, <laughs> I just I just took Tito there. The I just didn't have him. Oh, <laughs> well, he had Bruce Pritchard there, so that, that was a doubt. <laughs> I did. It balanced out yeah. the way. <laughs> Key West could not have handled yeah. all of us down there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. With Ron Simmons and uh, Charles Wright and Bruce Pritchard and who am I met? Oh, uh, Undertaker was a groomsman. Undertaker. Eddie Guerrero was a groomsman. Eddie. And they told us. Uh, oh, God, yeah. Vince, Vince, he had surgery. He couldn't make it. And he goes, hey, just try to make sure no pictures are taken or something. The next morning on Fox and Friends is me standing right there by Eddie and Undertaker. Somebody took a photo from a balcony, and uh, it was up on TV within 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's when I think Vince hurt his uh, quads, right? He had a, I think he that right, he, had, he, had, he just had yeah. surgery, and he, he – couldn't make it. Yeah. So Vince had surgery and, and hell, you know, he's probably up the next day knowing Vince probably trying to take a bump and he didn't make it. And, and, and I had a good excuse. My son qualified for the first state he ever, 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 ever tried out for. And yeah. I missed it and I still got heat. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I can tell who you suck up to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get Vince a tuxedo. I got you a tuxedo. <laughs> oh, down, down comes out, Charlie. He's hard because he had to put a deposit down on that tuxedo. It was eighty-seven dollars. Yeah. You kidding me? Dude, John married John married a four hundred one k plan, man. He's he's good. <laughs> Everybody's like, "Well, what do you do with your money when you wrestle?" I go, "Do what John Bradshaw did." I go, "Man, I marry a four hundred one k plan." Right. <laughs> he, he over married like crazy, man. Oh man, we Dude, don't need any more of this wedding talk. 
Uh, hell no, man. Yeah, please no. Let's talk some luck wrestling. Let's, let's talk okay. some wrestling and why in the world, how in the world you ended up at Goldman Sachs and then why you quit. <laughs> I know, man. I know. So I know. No, so I ended up at Goldman Sachs and uh, so I. But when yeah, I wait a minute, Charlie, got, you had a you had a heck of a, a GPA too. So you got you got to right. brag on yourself a little bit. I so I had like a it was a three sixty three three point six GPA. That was the. Uh, that was the uh, total in my in my major. It was a three point three in economics, but uh, it was um, it was uh, what do you call it? It was um, man, it was I don't know. Seton Hall was a, it was a, you know it's a top tier business school, Big East school. So um, I, I get, you know back then we didn't have you didn't have ZipRecruiter, you didn't have Indeed. So I had to get a, a headhunter to uh, you know, and I had to you know send out all my you know everything before the internet. You know I had to send out you know resumes to you know everybody. To you know, to HR to try to just to get a, to get a, a job, just to get a what do you call it, an interview? So I finally someone's like, well, you got to you got to get a headhunter. So I got a headhunter. Like we got to we got to deal at a um, it's Goldman Sachs. It's for a fixed income desk. You'll be uh, you'll actually be what you'll be doing is you'll be studying under the um, the uh, the uh, the stock brokers at the time. You know the stock brokers, and you'll be doing research for them. And it's, since it's fixed income, you'll be doing all types like you know anywhere from foreign currency to um, you know, to shorts, to puts, I mean, to, you name it, it was, it was, it was, it was, um, it was just, uh, it was going to be a hard ass interview. So he goes, I'm going to prepare you for it. He goes, but you got 21 interviews when you, re- when you go to Goldman Sachs. Um, if one person does not like you, then you will not get it. So I remember doing, I got through all 21 interviews and I got up to the managing director and he's like, can you, can you do a, um, this commodity right here? Can you, uh, you know, we, we got even better with that. I forgot about this too. It was, um, he asked me if I could do a, um, it was a commodity, but it was on a, it was a future and when it was going to settle and all that. And, um, I was like, so I'm looking at it and I was like, and he had a pen and paper and I'm just sitting there and I go, can I borrow your pen? And he looked at me, he goes, seriously. So I had to do it in my head. I did. He goes, I'll be right back. And I came back and he, uh, and uh, what do you call it? He offered me the job. So I was like, I was shocked, man. I did not think I'd be able to, to do it. Um, but I mean, I, it took me like, I studied my ass off for that too, because you had to, you had to have a series seven, series six and three too. Um, so, so, but then and it was all research, you know, and it was like, whatever the traders needed or what the brokers needed, we were, we were researching, you know, and then if you're doing foreign currency at times, you're waiting at a different time, you know, um, compared to the time at East coast at time, you're waiting for the markets to settle overseas. So at that time, uh, you know, I was working, you know, 14, 15 hours a day. You know, sometimes I'd sleep under my desk. I'd keep my suit like in a locker at the, at the Goldman Sachs gym. And then, you know, I just go shower, put the new suit on and, and just go back to work. You know, it was, uh, so John, you can, you can tell it's, uh, it's, um, you know, you, you live to work, you don't work to live, you know? Right. So yeah, the, the seven, it was, it was, the tough, seven was the long, um, right? and then, uh, but I, the, the seven was a long, yeah, right? I, I had to one. take the seven the, uh, three as, as well when I worked on Wall Street. The seven was yeah, long, it was, it takes forever. Yeah. Seven's seven that takes forever. 63 is more is just like tax is kind of like, you know, it's not that hard. Um, um, but the seven's the very, really, I mean, it was, it was the long, long one. Yeah. Were you guys so, on Stone Street? But uh, yeah, so. No, we were on, uh, we were on water and wall. So when I would come out, you would come out the, uh, you'd come out the world trade, the, t- the twin towers. Um, so I would do, I would take the, um, I would take the train from Jersey to Hoboken. I would take the path from Hoboken and the first stop was the uh, world trade. So I'd come right up the ele- elevators, right to the mall. I'd go right outside, uh, right outside, uh, right on wall street. So it was on water and wall. So I'd take wall street all the way down to water. And that's where the Goldman Sachs building was. Was it 80? Was it, what was the address? But, and this is before the, uh, uh, I want to say it was 85, 85 wall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 We, we, you we know, always tell so, when, uh, when Goldman would hit a big deal, uh, stone street, which is, I guess, one of the oldest streets in, in America, uh, would just be packed with guys with their business cards and right. everybody on Goldman Sachs celebrating some huge deal yeah. that they just did. You know, and then, uh, and I, w- I was there right when they, uh, we, they IPO too. So I was able to get the, uh, I was able to get, um, you know, stock from that as well. So it was, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a fun time then, but, uh, you know, that was right. That was right before the, uh, the dot-com started to burst. And, uh, so, um, 
you know, I was, I was working long hours, but also at the time I was also, I was on the independence doing wrestling for like four to five years with my brother. So we would travel you know, all, all over the weekend, all over the East coast. And then I work all in, uh, you know, Saturday do a show Sunday, maybe there might be a show, maybe not recover. And then, uh, we'd be back work, you know, working back out, uh, at Goldman Sachs. So, um, where was Russ, but, you know, Russ was working for recycled fibers. Uh, uh, he was working in the, uh, uh the trash business. <laughs> so uh, he to, they would do audits on people's, uh, say their, their trash and disposal business. And they would, uh, they would, you have a pricing matrix. And what they would try to do is they would lower the, uh, they would try to get a, a better rate for a customer. And if they could, it was a shared savings program, whatever they saved the, the customer, uh, you know, they would, they would get half. And then the other, the, uh, the, um, customer would get half, you know, so it was a shared savings program sales, but Russ worked in a recycle fibers trash. And where was that at physically? That was in uh, Newark, New Jersey. That was in Newark. So people, he lived in Kearney, New Jersey, and I was living in. Uh, I was. Li- Go ahead. Did, did people at Goldman know that you were wrestling on the weekends? Um, you know what? I, I didn't say anything to anybody. Uh, I, we started doing dark matches for WWE and. People they would go like Goldman Sachs would they 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 had they, they Madison Square Garden they they I guess they had a box or whatever up there and uh, so people would go and they're like man you guys look familiar you look like this Haas brothers are you and I'm like no I mean I told them it wasn't me because I thought I'd get fired you know um, did you did you use so, your name you know, on you know, one person did you use your real no we use the we use the Haas we we. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we used the Haas brothers, Charlie and Russ. And then, I mean, I used my real name, Troy Haas. So, but I mean, I never thought from Goldman Sachs would go and watch a WWF event. So, oh, Charlie, when did the really big? But uh, eventually, uh, um, what's that? What's that? Sorry, Charlie. I, I, the internet connections seems to be a little, little bit bad. Um, so, when did uh, when did you make the terrible decision to leave Goldman Sachs and be a professional wrestler? When uh, when w- when WWE uh, offered us developmental contracts, so I remember it was in Pittsburgh. They offered it to us, and then um, Bruce Pritchard was like, "Hot boys, we want to talk to you." And we thought we were, you know, they're going to tell us, "Oh, you guys, thanks for trying." Uh, you know, we, we wish you the best of luck and all that, and, and just move on. But because uh, you know, at the time, ECW was going on, WCW was going on, and um, Bruce Pritchard's like, uh, "JR and I need to talk to you." So we walked in there, and uh, Jerry was there too, and they were. Um, going to offer you guys developmental contracts can you guys um report to memphis uh right after christmas or after the new year january 1st we're like absolutely so i remember i, I told i told goldman sachs at my christmas party that uh it's my last day there's my two-week notice i'm leaving to go be a pro wrestler they thought i was nuts but but i remember uh when i when i made it to tv they would call and ask him for tickets so that's always fun did anybody try to talk you out of it no they they were uh no because at the time i mean you know WWF had a, you know, they, they just, WWF just IPO. They just went public, you know, I mean, UFC wasn't big. I mean, I mean, dude, you guys were killing it. I mean, you guys were, you know, were the UFC at the time and everyone thought it was uh, like, man, you're going to be making all this great money. You're going to be millionaires. I mean, they, they were, you know, they, you know, they, they, I mean, WWF was the place to be, you know, I mean, I remember work, I just got my developmental deal and going down and watching you guys do the match on wall street down there. Um, you know, WWF did the Wall Street just to kick off the IPL. Right. Yeah, it was a it was a huge time. That was the biggest ratings in wrestling history. You know, with Stone Cold, The Rock, and the Boys after the Attitude Era, the, the big war that was going on. When did when did you first decide to start training? It was Mike Sharp that trained you, right? Yeah, correct. Iron Mike Sharp started training us, and uh, did I was like I was bartending um in wrestling in college, and I've. I've been a fan of pro wrestling since, uh, man, I mean, s- since I was a little kid. I mean, my first match I ever saw on TV was when uh, Ray Stevens was pile driving Snook on the cement floor, you know, and, if I, and blood everywhere. And he's doing the electric leg shock. And I was hooked, man. And then, you know, here comes, then I'm watching, you know, I'm, I'm growing up in Oklahoma at the time. And here I'm watching, uh, then all of a sudden I'm watching, uh, you know, the Briscoes take on, um, you know, Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. And then, I, you know, it's like, you know, um, 
and they're from there and they're like oh these two these are the briscoe brothers you know they they're from tornado tornado alley man they wrestled tornadoes and they you know and then and we're we were in oklahoma so it was always watching them and then uh you know i'd watch uh you know mid-south wrestling you know and wwf and then it was world-class championship wrestling from the sportatorium you know on saturday night at midnight and so i mean i grew up watching all these different territories so i've always wanted to be a pro wrestler i I mean i was a fan you know of it and uh I actually probably that's why I went into amateur wrestling really is because uh, one, because of the pro wrestling, but because, you know, you, you heard of the Briscoes, so they were the, the great amateur wrestlers. And I thought that was the way you had to pave your way to get into pro wrestling. So. Did you, when did you first reach out to Mike Sharp? Did you already get the job at Goldman and then reach yeah, out I, to Mike? Uh, so I, 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 you know, ECW, I was watching ECW and I saw Taz had a, the house of hardcore. And so we drove it and I, and I had no idea where uh, pro wrestling schools were. I didn't even know anything about them. Um, and, uh, and so they, there was something, a commercial. And so my brother and I drove all the way out to Long Island and there, there was Perry Saturn and John Cronus from there. And they were like, uh, it's $3,500. And I'm like, well, we don't have $3,500. I mean, you guys can't wrestle. So we left and I was, uh, so I started working at Goldman and I was bouncing on the weekends as well, because when, I mean, to be honest, when I started, when I came out of college, it was like, it was like 40, 41,500. That's what I was starting at, you know, and, you know, it's, uh, and it wasn't much money. Plus, you know, you're living in the, you know, New Jersey, New York area. I got to pay for the, the, the train. I got to pay for the path. I got to pay for parking. I mean, it's everything adds up. So I was bouncing down at the shore during the weekends. Uh, and um, I saw, I ran into a bunch of guys who were like, you should go to Iron Mike Sharp School in Asbury Park. It's a, it's a hundred dollars down, $20 a week. So I'm like, you can't beat that. So over 3,500. So I started doing that and I, we were there for 10 months, you know, but Iron Mike actually to get in the ring and work with, you know, if guys he didn't think that potentially wouldn't really work with you, if he had potentially take you, you know, over to like the other ring and he would be in there working with you. And I mean, he would get in there and give me a backdrop and he would chop you and he'd hammer you with that big forearm. He, Cause people don't realize how big of a guy he was. He was a big human being, man. Real yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike was a huge guy. And also, uh, you know, you know, a lot of people really didn't take Mike Sharp serious because of his one loss record, but Mike was so technically sound too in the yeah. ring. You knew he was so solid and you knew when you went in the ring with him that you were going to get a technical sound guy that, that you could do anything with. And, and, and he, 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 he looked the part. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 very, very nice guy, man. Really nice guy. I mean, he, 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 he looked after uh, Russ and I. And I remember he, he was like, uh, we, we finished his school. And I'm like, all right, so can, can we send a tape up to WWF? And, and, and he goes, and can you help us get booked? He goes, help you get booked? He goes, first, you got to learn how to get yourself booked. And when you do, get me booked. And he started, goes, ha, ha, ha. He started laughing. <laughs> like, Typical old man. school guy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, man, I had no idea. You know, at least I didn't have to sign a contract and, and have to pay him 10 percent or anything like that you know like how some people did i heard they did but uh he never did anything like that you know he just like if you can get booked and get me booked give me get me booked so like are there any guys were there any guys that uh that uh you trained with that went on to to make the companies yeah so um i, I was um i was in there with uh let's see man um who, who went through there mike nova mike gucci went through there um devin storm ace darling um a lot of the guys, um, Stevie Richards. A lot of the guys that that went through uh, ECW went went went. Um, you know, can kind of they would go in and out. They would go through there. Um, you know, sometimes they would bounce back between Larry Sharp and Mike Sharp, the Monster Factory down there, and Mike Sharp School, because um, they were all like Brick Memorial, Brick Township guys. So, um, but those are the guys. You know, a lot a lot of those guys mostly made it to ECW. You know. Um, and you know, we never, we never, uh, we over ECW kind of overlooked us, I guess, cause we weren't that hardcore part. Um, you know, we were working for CZW and Jersey all pro. We were just more like, you know, amateur wrestlers that came right out of college. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for, uh, we were working for Jim Kettner at ECWA and Kevin Kelly was down there working. And I think Kevin Kelly's the one that maybe brought us to your attention, Jerry, maybe I'm not sure. I think it was so. too. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Kelly, the ring announcer, right? Right. Correct. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. not nails. No, 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 not nails. No, so it was uh yeah, Kevin Kelly, the ring announcer. He's yeah, the one that good, I good guy. Brought, yeah. He brought us uh he brought us to he brought I guess he brought our name up and you know some videos to Jerry and then uh and then they reached out to us and then uh, asked us to we'd like to do a dark what match. Was it Baltimore we brought you into that uh, were it was uh, our first dark match was um it was um 
The first one was um, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, true. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I'm like, well, you know, Madison Square Garden. And then we did the Meadowlands after that, Jerry. And right. then the next week I want to say was Baltimore. And then um, and then I want to say, man, it, I think it was like our third set of darks that you guys offered us the developmental. And that was in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so, that was right after the Baltimore. I remember we had a meeting right. in Baltimore. I introduced you that night to, uh, I think it was uh, JR. He was handling the contract at the Stanley Him and Bruce. Yeah, him and, yes, sir. They they were, yes, sir. That's a pretty good dark match to end up in Madison Square Garden on a load. Oh, man. What had to be a loaded card during that time. Dude, it was, dude, I mean, so here's the story about that, too. I remember we, we, we did the match. It was really good. And they had us, they had us go over and, um, Russ had his hand. Russ was going one, two, and he's doing three. Why he's pinning the guy? And I remember we walked back, and man, Billy Gunn grabs me. I mean, and I guess Billy, you know, the the, the DX was still there, or Road Dog and him were there, and he grabs me. He goes, "You mother!" He goes, "Don't you ever do that? You disrespect somebody doing a job for you. You do putting up one, two, three. He goes, that's a disgrace." And I'm like sitting there, and I go, "Well, hold on." I go, well, that, "That wasn't me. That was my brother." And I. And, he goes, what? And I go, hey, Russ, Billy wants to talk to you about your match. Man. He was, he something he wants to, and, I, and I walked right off of it. And boy, boy, Billy chewed his ass out. <laughs> so you threw under your brother bus. under the bus. Oh, man. Let me tell you what, what Russ did to me. <laughs> well, on the, well done. On, yeah. Well, let me tell you what he did to be on the Indies. So, like, we were getting paid, and he would always get the money. And so I'm like, man, well, how come we're only getting 40 bucks a match? You know, everyone else around us, like, low-key and homicide, these guys are getting, like, $100. I mean, I didn't come to find out to like when Russ passed away at the memorial, they did a Russ Haas memorial. I'm like, how come you guys never pay this more? And they're like, we did pay you. We we're giving it to your brother. Your brother, your brother was keeping your 60 and taking 40 the whole time. I was, I mean, I just, I, I always trusted them. I was so That's pissed, the man. reason I didn't make any money. They always gave my money oh. to Jack, man. <laughs> John, once again, it's that first count, man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Man. Oh, That's what they man. say in golf. You know, when you come in and say, what's your score? Uh, whoever goes second always wins because <laughs> yeah. the yeah. answer is what was yours <laughs> <laughs> i know well i mean and i got to tell you i remember i remember uh john i remember when we finally made it to the developmental territory down in memphis i remember uh the promoter down there or the guy that owned it he wanted you and eight and ron to take uh liberties out on me and russ or something like that. that's right yeah and, that's right and, and he was like uh and i, I I don't know what, what, what the deal was, you know? And, and I think it's like, I was always friends with Terry and uh, he's like, man, he, he, he wanted you guys to just beat the hell out of us or yeah. whatever. And, and uh, no, I, I didn't understand it. We went down there and uh, he pulled me and Ron aside and said, Hey, I want you to kind of, you know, show these guys, teach these guys a lesson. I said, for what? what? And he goes, well, you know, they're young, they're kind of cocky and, you know, just kind of rough them up a little bit. I said, what? I said, it makes no sense. I said, they seem like good guys. He goes, yeah, but, you know, just, just kind of, you know, give them the old treatment. And so that's when I came to you guys and instead, and then Jerry, instead of giving them the treatment, we sold for them and put them over. Yeah. They, they, we they, weren't, they, we, we were weren't the, supposed to do the job. Yeah. I did the job right in the middle of the ring. Awesome. Dude, dude, I mean, we had that, we, they, we just had the mid South tag titles, you know, and that's what, you know, and, uh, and they were supposed to give them the APA and but Terry was that guy, Terry going was so mad. He was pissed, man. That, uh, I mean, John, they sold for us. And then John, man, he, he let it, he's like, man, pin me. I was like, what? He goes, yeah, hit, hit your finish. Let's go. I was like, oh, man, I mean, that was like, we were like, oh my God, man. I mean, dude, yeah, he put us over, man. It's like, that's, Jerry, I, so, called, uh, Jerry, I called it on the fly and we didn't take the titles. <laughs> I love it. So I told Ron, I go, Ron, what do you think, Ron? And I can't repeat exactly what Ron said, but Ron goes, uh, you know, that's best up. And Ron wasn't happy about it. You know, happy about what they asked us to do, not about you guys, because we both yeah. liked you guys. And so I said, yeah. okay, we'll fix that. So Ron pretty much knew what I was going to do, and he agreed completely. We went out there, bump, bump, bump for him, and we're supposed to win the titles and hold them up for television or whatever it was. And yeah. uh, at the end, I said, pin me. <laughs> and I did the job right in the middle of the ring. And, and, then, you, and, and, then, I, and then, then you had to fill, you had to do a report and tell them what happened back and they shut Memphis down right after that too. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I went back. Yeah. I think it was. I think so it was you're JR. the one that killed I think Memphis. It was that I went to, and I said, "Hey, you want to no. know how your boys are being treated down there?" I said, "This is what yeah. was asked of us." And I said, "This is how you want to treat guys that can be future stars in this company." Yeah. I said, "I don't think you know what's going on down in, down there." I said, "Because this is not right," and that's when they uh, took the took the territory away from him. They should have. 
Yeah, they, they shut it down. They uh, then they sent us to Cincinnati, and then uh, and then uh, then I end up in OVW after Russ passed away. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was crazy time in the developmental territory because WCW got bought, ECW got bought, and then you know all that, that talent is being shipped all over the developmental territories. I mean, it's like you know it was just like something exploded like in the water, and you're trying to get through all this driftwood to get to the top just to breathe, you know, and you got. You know, it's just crazy, man. It was, you know, it was now that I think time. about it, Charlie, uh, you never returned the favor. I mean, you could have put me over somewhere. But, you know, oh, my God. I put you over the middle of the ring. That. I turned down – me and Ron turned down tag team titles for you and your brother. Caught on fly. And what do we get in return? Uh, see you guys. We're going to the WWE. We're big time. And then imitate you, John. Then, then yeah, imitate me and make hey, fun no, of yeah, but it, no, I, I, dude, I put you uh, – you gave me the ch- – you let me wrestle twice for the title. And you pay, and and I and, and you pinned me twice right in the middle of the ring. So I mean, and that was on SmackDown, and that was on TV. But I mean, I, at least I had a chance to say, hey, I competed for the uh, you know the the WWE title at the time. You know, the world had the heavyweight title. You held it, but you know, but you know, I did such a great impersonation of you. I remember we were trying <laughs> to do terrible. I got him no, over. It was terrible. Oh, you and Sheldon I mean, both. It was terrible. No, that was that was the APA one. That was bad. But when I did the personal, when you were JBL and I would do the CHL. We tried to do like a like a Dewey Hog in Boston. Hog, like I was going to be your your second man and come in there and be like you know like Dewey Hog was to Boss Hog, you know <laughs> you know and that's what I was going to try to be. I was gonna be. Hey, you know what Sheldon used to do? Yeah, slim, I was going to be. A, Sheldon would do slim slim, pick, slim pickings. Slim pickings. <laughs> <laughs> imitate me, and he walked yeah. pigeon toed. That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I hated him, and I still Dude, that him. was. But that's going around. That was going around on Twitter lately. Someone resent that. That thing had over a hundred thousand views the other day. That impersonation. He's like, my. He goes, I'm rich. My dog's rich. Hell, I'm. You know, my, everyone's rich. <laughs> I mean, he was. <laughs> Sheldon will walk in the oh, dressing man. room. Jerry Sheldon will walk in the dressing room, all pigeon toed with his arms out. And he'd be talking just like me, and he'd do it all day. And I go, Sheldon, I don't find this funny at all. At all, it's not funny. And he just keep going. It was. Yeah, we're going to do it. It was yeah, really go, we're gonna do a number nine. We're gonna do a number nine. What's a number nine? Well, that's that's what we're gonna beat the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're gonna whoop up a number nine. We're gonna come in a romping and a stomping, a whooping and a whopping, whooping every man and child within an inch of their life. <laughs> oh man, he, he, we still he still does that, man. We we it, we because Shelton and I talk almost every day, man. He's like he's my brother, man. We we oh man, what a great time we had, man. Shelton. You know, I never figured out, you know, Road Dog was a guy who was always so funny. And finally they figured out how to get that funny out there and, you know, became this massive, you know, Hall of Famer. Yeah. Sheldon is the same. I mean, Sheldon is one of the most entertaining guys I've ever seen. I just oh, don't know yeah. why they couldn't get that figured and out you know what? He, out there in the ring. He can sing, man. He, if you, and this is a crazy, he sang at my wedding, but he, um, if you close your eyes, he can sing any Pearl Jam song there is. It's amazing. And you would think it's Eddie Vedder singing. Like, he, he is such a hell of a singer, but no one ever takes note to that, man. He can sing any type of song. But, I mean, dude, he does a hell of a Pearl Jam impersonation. And that, that's something very hard to do. You know? oh, he's so talented. Uh, he's one of the greatest yeah. athletes WWE's ever seen also. He's a, yeah. He was a 100-meter guy at junior college and an all American yeah. heavyweight wrestler at college. Yeah, he won the junior, he won the, he won the junior college national nationals in the 100 meter i mean it's ridiculous man i remember he told me he, he ran a 4 2 40 he, he said he had a full ride to north carolina state he said uh, you know here he is 18 years old he would run through everybody um he said he came around he said his first day of practice and pads he comes running around the corner he said this fifth year senior hit him so hard lit him up he got up and he said you know what i think i'm gonna go to try amateur wrestling he goes he goes i've never been hit that hard he goes and i'm not gonna have, he goes i'm not i don't want to and he's a tough guy he's like he goes dude i was 18 years old he goes i was never been used to get hit like that he goes you know because i'd run through everybody all through high school he goes and all of a sudden this fifth year senior lit me up and he goes you know what i'm gonna I, he called jay rob he's like hey can i get that uh, scholarship you offer me <laughs> so he went on to junior college and he made it to minnesota so charlie charlie you you you, you finished up memphis and you after john killed memphis and then uh then you went <laughs> to Cincinnati. Right. did you have less stature and was that yes yeah, was that your call up uh for no no, no we we had less stature um, and they, they, they did call us up. They called Russ and I up and they were, they announced that team angle was going to be, uh, Russ and I and Kurt and Shelton. It was going to be us four. And, um, and we were, they were getting ready to go with it. And then Russ died, uh, December 14th. 
And um, no, December 15th, Taylor was born December 14th. He died December 15th, uh, 2001. And then, um, you know, just the rest was history. So it didn't work out. And then, uh, but, you know, Shelton, um, a year later, they, they came back to Team Angle and they put Shelton and I together. And they asked Arn to work with us and Jerry, you to work with us whenever you were, you, you were up there with us. And, uh, I, and I mean, Arn had us in that ring every day, you know, just every day. Uh, showing us and showing us. And I mean, we had a really, had a really good work ethic, man. And I, I couldn't thank Shelton more because he had the same dream I wanted. Um, and that was just, man, to make it. And so. Was that the first time you'd run across Sheldon or did, did, did you run across him in any of the training camps? Um, I, I ran across him and, well, you know, him and Brock, um, we were, they were at OVW and we were, and Russ and I were at HWA and they were supposed to, we were supposed to do a dark match together. But someone forgot. Uh, someone in uh, talent relations forgot to book Russ and I for that show. So it was. But that was going to be. Um, and thank God they did forget because that was when Brock was doing the shooting star press off the uh, off the off the top rope, and Shelton was doing like a one fifty leg splash. And I was like, man, I was like, which one do you want to take, Russ? Because I know they were going to go over. But they. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which one will you want to take, Russ? Ronnie's doing the same thing. Ron was standing out there one time in, in the middle of the day, and a bunch of guys were doing these flips off the ropes, and uh, somebody asked Ron, said, what are you doing? He goes, looking at a bunch of stuff John's going to take. <laughs> oh, somebody asked him, said, what would you do if they called that with you? He goes, tag John. <laughs> Dude, I mean, John I ain't taking what, it. Man. Dude, that's how we felt with taking Ron's spine on the pine, man. I mean, Shelton and I, would, we would do like, you know, we would do uh, odd or evens to see who was going to take it. And man, no matter how, who who won, no matter what, I always end up having to take it, man. I don't know how it happened, but it always, always in the comeback, I always had to take it, man. I always took that spot on the pine until one time Shelton took it, and he took it, and it hit so hard. Shelton goes, whoa. And he said he felt like his body just left and he came back, man. <laughs> that wasn't a spine buster. That was an F.U. I, I, everybody said the same thing. Ron would throw a guy so hard. He was so freaking strong. He lift you up with one one hand and then just plant yeah. you with the other one. Oh, remember, remember test test jumped up and took it by himself before Ron hit it. He was, in Kansas it was City. in a match. Yeah. can't see. He jumped up and took the bump and Ron goes, damn. He came over and tagged you, man. That's remember right. That? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry test, test had just started and he hits the ropes. He's tagging with Albert and he comes off and he's nervous about taking this from Ron. So he comes off and he jumps. Ron hasn't touched him. He jumps and then throws his legs out and lands on his own back. That's a pretty <laughs> smart buster. rookie there. He took a spine buster out. And Ron just looked at him, went over. I said, don't tag me. Don't tag me. Don't tag me. <laughs> I, remember, I remember one match I had to take the spine on the pine, the dominator, and then your guys finish. I was like, Sean, how the hell is this happening? Man? I, you know, I was like, how is this happening? You know? Uh, I remember it got so bad where people were like, we knew Shelton was going to take it. We knew he would never take that spot out the pot. Somebody in the crowd said that. So I was like, man, people are really thinking that. <laughs> it's because you guys were young and tough. Uh, but my best story was, John, you got to remember this. We were in South Africa and I, I bought this hat, man, right in the airport. And I remember Rikishi wore it out and he squashed it. And it was like one of the first, it was a South African tour. And I'm sitting there going, man, so I'm like, I'm going to get this some bitch. So I thought he was in the shower and I had this whole bucket full of ice made and water. And I remember Shelton pulled the curtain and he pulls the curtain and I throw the water and who do I hit? It's JBL. I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> man. And John looks at me and goes, you son of, and takes off after me. And I was like, thank God he couldn't catch me. But he goes, you know what, Haas? He goes, don't go to sleep this tour. Do not even go to sleep. Dude, that whole tour, I mean, I had the, the chair pried underneath the doorknob. I was so scared they'd get the key. I mean, until the last day of the show, my bag, I found my bag. It was chained with like 50 different locks on it and it was chained up and I had to, you know, I, and I, we were the first match. And I'm like, well, how am I going to get all my stuff out of there? And John goes, here, I got a key for you, Charlie. He threw me like a hundred keys. <laughs> I don't know if I can figure it all out. I gave the but keys. I mean, I was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was my, that was my, man, what what an idiot I was, man. I, I did, I threw that cold water and john was just like oh, oh it's yeah, all Jerry, you can imagine you're not expecting it and all of a sudden you just doused with a bucket of ice water and like what'd you that yeah. for what'd you that for and jerry like oh mistake. and i'm like and i wasn't <laughs> i'm sitting there going 
that's you're not Rikishi oh shit and I was like I'm <laughs> done man I mean I thought it was over I was like I was dude I was so scared to death man I was like I didn't sleep the whole tour I did not sleep I did not sleep I was like I didn't know if I'd get if I was gonna get my head shaved or my eyebrows shaved I didn't know what was gonna happen so but thank god John took he was very kind where he just he just tied up my bag so that was yeah good. yeah we didn't damage his <laughs> tied we, up we didn't tie it up and didn't put a bunch of locks on it we i collected oh, yeah. locks all through john it. you really calmed down there during that <laughs> during that period sounds like <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. well i was frozen yeah, yeah. after he threw all that water on me <laughs> <laughs> well i mean after that i mean I, I pretty much knew i was gonna every time i wrestled i was doing the job so i was like man i'm gonna make him look good <laughs> <laughs> i had to get you back for putting you over for a title down in memphis I know, I know. Oh, you did, man. I know. I know. The best is when we wrestled you guys up, in, uh, and and this is our best. It was wrestling you guys up in Af in uh, up in Iraq when we when we first when they just they just took over Iraq. They found Saddam, and it was the first match there, and it was so cold out. And I remember you just give me those chops, bam, right off. And I'm like, oh my god, Shot and I, I'm, we're selling like, we're like, man, you guys are selling those great. I'm like, because it, it's so cold out, it really hurts, man. <laughs> you know. But uh, what a great time! I mean, I couldn't thank you enough for getting us on that tour, man, to to pay back. Oh, back of course, the yeah. Oh, it was so cold. great, man. Yeah, you know, and, and, we and were, I met, yeah, Mr. We Bentley too, December, right? You know, it, it'd be warm during the day, but it would get freezing, freezing cold in the desert at night. And that, that's, that match was toward the end of the afternoon, and it was cold out there. Yeah, it was so cold, man. It was so cold. And then, then, then Dirk Bentley, or who, who is that your buddy? Was it, uh, or who was the country music singer that you brought out that was over there? Daryl Worley. Daryl Worley, that's it. Yes, yeah, sir. That's great it. guy and a terrific yeah. voice. He and Mark Wills both went over there a bunch of, but uh, yeah. yeah, both both super, super guys. Yeah, really good guys, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, man, it was, I mean, I remember that story. I was like, oh, my gosh, man. And then, uh, yeah, that was the one. That, 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 white, that cold water, I was like, oh, I'm going to get it today, man. I was like, and I'm just oh, sitting there thinking, wow. I, I, I come back, I'm sitting by Ron, I'm going, why would they do that? I had no <laughs> idea why they did it. I didn't know they were trying to get Rikishi. I thought, why would they just throw a bucket of cold water on me in the middle of the shower? I go, I get they're ribbing me, but why are they ribbing me? <laughs> of course, John, Shelton's you, like, John, you have such a past history. It could have been for for many things. It could have been for damn near anything. You're right. I just I deserved <laughs> oh, it, whatever it was. Oh man, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember when uh, I just broke up with somebody and I came home, John, and all my house, the whole house was cleaned out. And I was telling you about it. And you're like, yeah, that happened to me too. Except I had an empty Zima bottle left for me. That's right, like that. a Zima <laughs> bottle. Yeah. That's right. Uh, man you know so, what a crew you guys had though in ovw you know when you yeah. guys had uh we had you and you had brock and you had brandy you had sheldon cena yeah yeah, yeah you the know best, the best class to ever come out of anywhere you know i you know and i think a, a lot of people uh they probably don't give Cornette a lot of credit or danny davis a lot for that um you know but they they were really you know Cornette's such a you know stickler and he's such a uh like all right this, this is, I mean, he writes TV like it was written, you know, like you understand it. Like, all right, here's how you have, this is the, uh, we're going into a commercial break here. This is how much time you have. Like he really taught us the TV and all that. But I mean, but then he would, uh, you know, he would want you to, he, you know, you stick to kayfabe, man. The heels do not set the rings with the face, you know, the baby faces. Um, he really tried to teach you the history of wrestling, but, um, and so did Danny Davis, you know? So, I mean, but you're right. You had Batista, you had Cena, you had Orton, you had Nick Densmore, you had Rob Conway, you had me, you had Shelton, you had Brock, you had Lance Cade, you had uh, Rene Dupree came out of there. I mean, you had, you know, you, God, it was just a, a hell of a lot of talent came out of there. Yeah, Danny did a great job down there. I mean, I've always, always a big fan of Danny's and, and Jim Cornette's. I was just he, he yeah. had the two perfect people for teaching people yeah. about the business you know much like to me like uh steve kern you know steve kern's a great guy that, yeah he's a great guy man. that is able to explain the business you know a lot of people know the business but they can't explain it you know arn anderson has that gift too yeah yeah i think arn arn is a great you know arn did really, really a lot with shelton and i i uh, can't think him would always tell me he's like look man he goes when, you, when you're doing it around your eyes he goes and, that, and it's that easy he goes if you try to make the face he goes, it looks fake. He goes, let your eyes tell the story and let the face form around the eyes. I mean, I mean, he just, you're right. He, he had a way of teaching, man, coaching. You know, they teach that old school. That, that's where Cornette come in so handy, I think, because it, he gave everybody such a good base and a foundation to come out on. And uh, 
as you guys know, you, you can't do anything without the, well, without, without uh, the basics and, and, and Jimmy, Jimmy, both creatively and in the ring, he he was such a good teacher. And and then and then then when they moved it down to Kern, there Steve Kern, come up that old school way with Eddie Graham philosophy. He could break yeah. down a match, break down a finish, and 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 it's yeah. so easy for some of these guys. But right. they're teachers. That, that, that's the bottom line. They're they're some really good teachers. Yeah, you know, and I, I've been, you know, I've been wrestling on uh, on the Indies a lot lately here, and uh, you know, I've been working a lot with was uh, is Kevin Sullivan, you know, because he he did a lot with Eddie Graham too, and uh, you know, he he's teaching me a lot how like how booking is and and all that as well. So he, he has a good mind for that as well. Yeah, Ke Kevin, Kevin was was a mainstay down here, and Kevin learned so much from Eddie, and Eddie Eddie really took Kevin under his wing because he saw right from the very beginning, and, and these guys. That's the thing about you know I remember Cornette starting, and I remember Kern of course starting, and uh, and uh, and uh, some of these guys starting, and they just start with that that basic knowledge of being teachers and just sponging yeah. in everything that they're, they're, they're taught and then be able to, to, to help other people out by placing it in the right, right spot for them. Right. Right. You know, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's amazing, man. You know, I, and I, you know, that was uh, one of the territories I never really got to grow up watching was that Florida championship wrestling because we, we didn't have access to it in Oklahoma, but yeah, I mean, just, the talent that came out of there but then uh, you know with like uh Ern and um you know and then like you Arn and you you know a lot of you i mean a lot you know and, and a lot of people came out of that that i was able to work with uh, in wwe you know as their agents so you know i it was uh i mean here i'm you know reading about everybody in the books and you know the uh, magazines because that was my internet growing up and uh you know, i had a huge collection of magazines for pro wrestling but but then to be able to work with you guys it was such an honor <laughs> Do you still have any of your old magazine starter? Are you keeping it? Up? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. I do, I do, wow. I do, man. What's yeah. your oldest one you have? You know, uh, I remember going all the way back. Um, one of the oldest ones I had was when um, the one that, that's real popular that I have is when when uh, Piper lost his hearing to uh, Buzz Sawyer, and uh, and it was like for the U.S. title, and uh, there's like Piper may never hear again. And then the next day he's on WWF TV <laughs> and he's, and he's normal. There's nothing wrong with his hearing. I'm like, what's going on? I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're working down there in Texas with a, a really dear friend of mine, James Beard. James yes. Beard. Oh, he's he, 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 James. he's the one that helped me so much when I got started. James is one of the few referees. Of course, when you're getting, you know, you got your ring guys, you have, that's necessary that would call matches for the baby yeah. face and the heel. I mean, James is, really talented and, and a great guy oh he's a great guy man he is one of the, i mean he's one of the best one of the best um I, i've known him and he's roughed a lot and he's working for the swe uh, world class territory that i'm working with or you know that, that the uh and uh did him and i did it with him and kevin sullivan and uh, eric embry is working with us too so i don't know, remember eric embry I do remember Eric. I, I don't. I don't know if I've ever met Eric. Uh, I, I certainly. Yeah, I watched him. I watched him a ton of time there at a sport yeah, yeah. but He was gone yeah. when I was there, and I don't think I ever was oh. in the same territory with with Eric. Okay. Okay. But I okay. know exactly yeah. who he is, and people speak yeah. very. People speak very highly of Eric. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just got to meet him and I just started working with him. But yeah. So yeah, I'm working with him and uh, him and Kevin right now and James. So it, it's it's been a lot of fun, man. It's been a lot of fun. So. How's it going yeah. down there with those guys? It's going great, man. You know, uh, they're, they're, Kevin's teaching me a lot about booking and, uh, you know, the backstage. Because eventually, you know, what I'd like to do, man, I, I love the pro wrestling. And I would really like to get a uh, job, you know, or, uh, you know, somewhere in management. You know, it's something like, uh, you know, I've been doing it for so long. It's something I'd really like to do, you know. Um, and so, I mean, just trying to pick the minds of those guys. And uh, they're, they're, they've taught me a lot, man, you know a lot you know I, I, I if you figured out sports entertainment you got pro wrestling and i always say sports entertainment are the you know the writers the ones in hollywood that have that sci-fi niche or that creative talent and the pro wrestlers are the are the pro wrestling is the, the right guys that that blood sweat and teared for this business that have drawn money in this business and they're the ones that, that do the pro wrestling. that's how that's passed down through the booking you know 
they're pro wrestling. Jerry, so I think there's two different, you got sports entertainment, pro wrestling, you got two different niches. So Jerry, uh, Charlie called me a while back. Now, that's really nice for Charlie to call me. We talked about being a heel, different stuff like that. Then at the end of it, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie says, Hey, uh, you ever thought about coming out of retirement or anything, you know, having a match or something? He wanted me to come out of retirement to put him over. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, and, and, and this is perfect because we we got three shows. This uh, and the world class has three shows uh, and for the the for WrestleMania this week. You know, it's going to be in Dallas. So, John, man, I, <laughs> See, I know Jerry, you're going to be around. Still trying to come in and, and, and John, like, I think I, it'd be great. And, I, and and not only that, but I, but not only that, but I but I took his clothesline from hell, and I'm and I'm honoring John, who honored you know Stan Hansen with that with that you know taking the lariat. So I call it the uh, Layfield Lariat at the double L. And so I was wondering if you let me do it to him. And so he not only stole my move, Jerry, he wants to beat me with it for me to come out of retirement to get beat by my own move. No, well, you, you know, there's an old saying in the business, if you're going to get beat, get beat by a finish. And if you're going to get beat by a finish, get beat by your own finish. That shows you how tough that damn finish is. You know, it's, just <laughs> not the, it's just not the guy doing the finish. It's the damn finish itself. So Charlie exactly. learned a lot there and in, in requesting that. And, in, and as many jobs as the Texans been doing for Oklahoma this year, Charlie, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just staying in, in, the, in the mode there. I know, man. I know. Um, but, I, but I mean, I know. I mean, so I'm still the, uh, the, what do you call it? The, the court's still out on that one. So hopefully, you know, the jury's still out on that. Hopefully John will, maybe he'll, he'll pass it down or, or send a pass. Don't hold <laughs> I mean, John, uh, John, John's been known to do a job or two, but I don't, you know, in his home state, that's a pretty tough request there. <laughs> Charlie, oh, I was man. wrestling Brock when we first, uh, when he first started. And so I had him on yeah. the loop and we were, we're in West Texas. So we worked Lubbock and Amarillo and we get to Abilene. And so I, I go up to Brock and I say, Hey Brock, uh, I need to talk to you. And uh, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is your college town. Your college buddies are here, right? Because he hadn't seen me, seen them earlier. And I said, yeah, he goes, hey, I'm switching the finish. I, I'm going to put you over. I said, they don't care who wins. I'm telling you about the after party. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, as long as there's an after party, I don't care about who goes over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny, man. That's great. That's great. <laughs> oh, man. But, oh, what was going to say? The, um... Uh, Mr. Briscoe, I, I got to see West the other day uh, or a couple of months ago, man. He looked really good. Congratulations yeah, he, on it. He's still, he's, still, he's still out of training his butt off there. Charlie, Charlie, you got that. Speaking of West, my son, uh, you got a couple of boys too that are, are nationally ranked now. I think at least one yeah. of them nationally ranked. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with youth wrestling and, and what your yeah. boys are doing. And, and all yeah, that. so uh, the, so we run a youth program called Best Train. It's out of uh, it's out of Allen High School. It feeds into the Allen High School program, and uh, Allen High School has uh, you know they they're they're going for their thirteenth straight uh, state title this year. Now, um, Allen High School for y'all don't know they 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 they're big in uh, Division football. One. They've sent two guys, two national Bo Nichols, Penn State with what a three timer and four time finalist, and uh, yeah, and, and then current, uh, current true freshman. It's only the third uh, true freshman ever to win a national title. Uh, AJ AJ for uh, out, yeah. out of uh, out of Oklahoma State, and oh, and man. we think uh, we think Allen Texas because you sent us the whole damn family up there. So Stillwater <laughs> High School got the two little yeah. brothers also coming. I know. Up. Well, and and, and uh, Anthony. Um, Anthony, the middle one, he I know he he verbally committed. I think he he's gone ahead and signed with Oklahoma State. Right. And, uh, yeah. And the uh, the little one, uh, the, the, he's a sophomore. So yeah. So he's uh, um, and then and uh, I'm coaching their nephews, Vinny and Gino Ferrari, down here. Um, so and they're they're my boys' ages, Russ and Chuck's ages. But yeah. So we I got the the best trained youth program. It's doing really good. Uh, we won states last year. Um, for both uh, youth, men and women, Texas started, you know, they started honoring, uh, they, um, they back women's wrestling now. And I, and that, and that's going to be a big thing. I think it's going to help save men's wrestling programs, you know, in, in college right now, right or you know, J. Yeah. Jay Robinson um, called that years ago. He said, the only thing that will save men's wrestling from going under is, is title nine women's wrestling. Yeah. He yeah. Called that, he called that right when, right when the, the title nine come started coming in, they started yeah. dropping a lot of the so-called minor sports. Yeah. And they asked Jay what he thought, and he said, well, he said, you can look at it. He said, but 
that's going to be the savior of men's wrestling is women's wrestling. Yeah, I think he's right. Iowa, yeah. Iowa, Iowa. So and, and then, uh, you know, know Iowa. Yeah, University of Iowa just made an official sport, and I think several other D one universities. Right. Charlie, did you say it, 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 Clemson did too? Clemson. Pardon? Charlie, did you say you're going yeah. for the third? Clemson started with thirteenth straight yeah, yeah, state I, title. Yeah, Allen Allen High School is going for their thirteenth straight state title. Wow, year. that's that's impressive. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's their uh, the head coach is Jerry Best. He was a four time state champion out of Oklahoma. He was the uh, second person to ever do that behind T.J. Jaworski, who was the first. And uh, T.J. is a teammate of mine. But Jerry, uh, he's from uh, he's from Chandler, Oklahoma, and uh, he, he's running this program. And I grew up together. And uh, so he's asked me to take care of the, the best the uh, youth program. He runs the high school, so it feeds into it. Uh, we have the same type of system, and it works out, man. It's a uh, it's a uh, he's a hell of a coach, man. He's a, he's like a brother, but uh, dude, he's done a great program. But he's he's produced a lot of Division One All Americans. A lot of kids in Texas have uh, been able to get you know get their school paid for because of. Uh, wrestling and uh and he's doing a hell of a program with the women. Uh, Charlie uh, because you know he's an Okie and you're an Okie so you're starting them as a youth wrestling and Okie right. style by the time they get to high school then another Okie's got them so they have no time to turn into a Texan you know yeah. so when they leave Allen Allen high school they're they're ready for <laughs> for wrestling uh, yeah Charlie there's That's a it, trend man. Here. they're ready to go man they're Charlie there's a go. trend here Every yeah. time an Okie gets a car, they go to Texas. As soon as, they, as soon as they can cross the Red River, they come to the promised land, just like you did, Charlie, because you're a brilliant person, 3.6 GPA. You were smart enough to get out of Oklahoma. Well, and Texas also has no state income tax, so that's good. That, 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 that's, that's, that's the plus. No state <laughs> income tax in Texas. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the reason but, uh, John's I, still a citizen of, of Texas instead of his adopted state of New York. You dang right. It, that's right. I had, John, I had to file in uh, Maryland last year, and it, I, it cost me like something like six or seven percent just for living in this state. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even want to live. I don't even want to live here. Is Maryland the state? Dude, it's like, yeah, yeah it should be. It should, should have been Delaware, man. But uh, no, uh, man, it's um so bad with uh. I mean, I remember working in New York. So I lived in New Jersey, but I worked in New York, but I had to pay New York tax and New Jersey tax. Well, and I'm like, dude, it was like, it was so much, it's so ridiculous. I'm like, dude, I'm out of here. I'm going to Texas, no state income tax. So I said, man, God. That's the thing, you know, our, our, our baseball team got, to, to me, one of the silliest uh, propositions out there. They want to move to Montreal. Can you imagine these players? They're living in Florida. There's no state income tax. Then all of a sudden they go to Montreal. Not only is there a Canadian tax they got, yeah. but there's that uh, profit provincial tax that they got yeah. in Ottawa. So they're, they're getting the tax double there. So it's triple taxation out of those ball players. I don't see how they, they go for something like that. Well, remember Edge and uh, Edge and Valvinus moved to um, uh, Bahamas, Bermuda, uh, Bahamas, Bahamas, right? Bahamas. Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, they moved to Bahamas, so they have to pay taxes, but that backfired on. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Val Venus talked Edge into that. I think Edge Edge regrets that to this day. <laughs> talked him into that, man. They, they moved the Bahamas and they'd go, they'd go on tour and they come back and everything be stolen out of their place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you know, Charlie, how this goes, and so do you, Jerry. You know, it, people like to live in Florida, Texas, Nevada because there's no state income tax when you're playing like pro sports or you're a wrestler or something. Yeah. Well, now all these states. You know, we used to have to file 20, 25 different state returns because every yeah. state, every state you would wrestle in would charge yeah. you for yeah. a tax. And some cities yeah. like St. Louis and Philadelphia. I mean, That's I, right. I, I got That's in trouble right. with Philly tax commission there, and I didn't even know I was supposed to pay a city tax there until my account called yeah. me. Man, they're after you. <laughs> and then you go to Australia to wrestle, man. It was like 51% they take. <laughs> I was like, man. Yeah, and in Canada, we get the blue checks, which had the exchange rate yeah. was against us. So we lose money on yeah. the exchange rate, and we get taxed. <laughs> oh, man. What a Great crazy time. time. Great time. For yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. But my son, my, my, my son, Russ, is doing really well, and so is Chuck. Russ won the uh, Houston Nationals. He just saw American at the National Duels. Um, he's ranked uh, he's top five in the country right now. He was ranked one at one time, and now he's top five. Oh, um, class with the Charlie. Uh, Russ is a uh, he is a ninety pounder and he's in fifth grade right now. So he's he's going to be a big kid. And Chuck is at uh, he's at seventy pounds and he's in third grade. Um, 
But, uh, you know, I, I here's the deal with Jerry. I, I don't believe in cutting their weight at that age. So no. I make them eat up, you know. So a lot of times they're like maybe two, three, four pounds younger. A lot of these guys, especially at Tulsa Nationals, they'll, they'll cut their sons down 10 pounds, you know, seven, 10 pounds. That's, that's like a third of their body weight. It's ridiculous. You know, um, the sport's hard enough. So, um, I mean, I don't know if it'll ever stunt their growth or whatever, but the sport's hard enough. I don't want them to hate the sport any more than practice. You know, it's such a hard sport that I just want them to eat into their weight. And uh, my brother-in-law did it with his nephews. And my, and my nephew, Michael's ranked fifth in the country right now as a junior at St. Joseph's Regional in Jersey. And uh, he's a, uh, you know, he's a junior right way wrestling at 170 right now. You know, where, so, Rick I mean, gonna send he, he never cut weight. Where's Rick sending him, Rutgers or where? I got Cornell looking at him. He's got, uh, I mean, he, you know, he's got some good grades, you know, uh, you know, how Annapolis is looking at him, you know, Kerry Colott's there right now. Uh, he, he's got some really good recruits, but um, I don't know. Rick's uh, Rick's, uh, you know, Iowa state's looking at him. Nate Carr's kids are up there. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, Cornell looks, Cornell and Princeton look pretty good right now. So. Yeah. Princeton, Princeton's a top five, believe it yeah. or not, a Ivy league show top five in a, in a, in a, country john and ncaa yeah. wrestling now i think they're in yeah. there an oklahoma state coach there too or something yeah uh yeah reese humphreys is there coaching i think oh. yeah yeah he's there coaching uh they have that rtc down there yeah it'd be just between princeton and uh and cornell man i mean they are you know i mean you know cornell's got you know dake you know but you know you can't you can't go wrong there with it another so. trend charlie once he got a car he got out of oklahoma <laughs> 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 oh man you, Charlie you still roll around with them your, your kids you're training yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah man I think uh that's why I'm, I'm still with the high school kids and uh college kids yeah I still I still like uh I once I I kind of like you know stepped down from like doing like the pro wrestling real serious I started just coaching them and then I was like man I have to get back in shape with these uh, high school kids they want to roll around and stuff yeah so I'm still yeah I'll still do it man I still I still can hit my low level and I can still hit my high crotch on them and uh, I got my spiral ride to the uh, cowboy ride. Jerry, I hit that cowboy ride, that arm on the back all the time, the hammer lock. All right. All right. Charlie, I, I've seen some uh, some tape of, of your two boys and in, in, in and in a different type of mat there recently. Yeah. I've seen a couple yeah. of Yeah. They, they, look, they look pretty impressive. So, uh, they can do a couple of moves that, uh, that are they're really sweet, man. Yeah, they're, they're, doing, uh, they're doing the um, – the, man, you know what? I'm, they're around pro wrestling rings so much. They go in there and uh, – you know, the, the, man, I, you know, that's like, seems like the only discipline I can do with them. Like they, they don't, they don't, I can, you can't threaten them anymore. I'm just like, the only thing I can do is like, you know what? There's no pro wrestling practice this week. And they're like, dad, we're sorry, please. We're sorry. You know, I, I just try to make it fun. Um, but man, they, they, they convinced me that they can do their own match. So I, they called up, um, you know, where James Beard is. I'm like, Hey man, can you let them, they want to open up a match. So we had them, they wrestle each other, wrestle each other four times, but man, they called in the ring and, uh, you know, and they're just, uh, Man, they, you know, we're just just teaching the psychology. You know, the arm drags. Uh, we don't do, have them do any spine busters. We don't have them do any power bombs. They're not allowed to wrestle off the top rope, and they're not allowed to wrestle outside the ring. They got to stay in the ring, and they got to just, you know, anything like a hip toss or a body slam, where you know, feet first. But uh, that, but, but I mean, they're, they're doing really well, man. They're just they're having fun, and uh, you know, Randy Orton said so that's the way he learned. You know, him and his brother. Yeah, uh, Randy so. learned right down the road here at, at Eddie Graham's uh, youth camp. He had down here. He, they had a ring yeah. set up and wrestling mat set up, and they had guys and like Jack and Bob Roop go in and teach them amateur stuff. And then they'd roll around in the ring a little bit afterwards, there, and that's how yeah. Orton Junior learned. You learned. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of sons, there have you seen Jacob Henry? Jacob Henry. No, I've not. Son, Mark Henry. No. Oh, oh yes, yes, I yes I have. What a, yes, he, I he have. just did a tournament this weekend. He pinned all four guys, and the guy he pinned <laughs> in the finals in seconds was last year's uh, uh, state placer. So, and then Jacob yeah, is, him, freshman, he's a beast too. Dude, he is unbelievable. I know. I met him, and uh, you know, last year, like two years ago, Mark is such a great guy. Mark, we came out to the boys' state tournament and uh, watched Russ uh, win his way through states in. Um, and, uh, and, and Jacob was there and, you know, Jacob's such a hell of an athlete. He plays basketball and Mark's like, well, we're not really sure what he wants to do or what we're going to do. And man, he just really started wrestling and he's killing everybody, man. He's a hell, a hell of a wrestler. I man. think so far this year, he's pinned everybody he's wrestled. So far. Wow. Man. As a freshman. He's going to win it. 
yeah, he's going to win it, man. I'm so proud of him, man. And, uh, and it, 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 good for Mark, you know, Mark never really pressured him into it. You know, I mean, it, and I've, like seen you said, some football, I've seen some football video of, of Jacob too. And they, I mean, he, he just, he did just yep. he pancakes everybody. He's up against yeah. all the time. I know. Charlie, were yeah. you there when uh, Mark Henry pulled the locker off the hinges? No, I was not there for that. No, Unbelievable. No, no. So Arn Anderson, I think it was Arn, uh, you know, we can ask him, but he, had, he we were in like a high school type locker, you know, when you close the lock, you know, the door yeah. Yeah. thing. Well, Arn had closed it by mistake. I think it was Arn. Anyway, they had a, a crowbar. They're trying to get this locker off. I'm sitting there with Ron watching this, you know, maintenance guys trying to get this locker, you know, undone. They said, Mark, Ron Simmons says, wait till Mark gets here. <laughs> sure enough. Mark comes in We say, Mark, rip that locker off the hinges. Mark puts a towel over the locker so he could grab it, puts his hand on the other locker and rips that locker off its hinges. It Jesus, was one of the most impressive man. things I've ever seen. Yeah, I, Mark's told just, the story since. When he did that, I said, Mark, if I've ever done anything to upset you, I want to now apologize to you. <laughs> that, that, was, yeah. that was superhuman. Yeah. Yeah, dude, he is, uh, man, he is, he is just, a, he, yeah, you're right, he's superhuman, man. He's a, he's a freak of nature, dude. I mean, he's when he looked at that, that, you know, look it up on uh, YouTube, the Thomas one-inch yeah. dumbbell, they said was unliftable. Yeah. I mean, he took yeah, a I saw that. Yeah. To do it. That was, man, that was superhuman. That was unbelievable. Yeah. Really, you know, the world's strongest man, that wasn't just a moniker. He really was. Yeah, he was. I know, he was, man. He, he You know, he's an Olympian, too. He's, he's unbelievable great athlete great guy too just a great human being he, he would have won a lap yeah so he got injured in 96 during yeah. that olympic uh yeah, championship. Hurt his back. He, had, he hadn't hurt his yeah, back he was he, he was hurt so bad he, he, he was lucky and competed yeah he, he was lucky he was even yeah. able to compete in that, yeah. that term yeah man you know he was telling me he had to eat up to thirteen thousand calories a day and he goes, and he to look like that. And he goes, and there's Michael Phelps over there eating 10,000 calories a day. And he looks like a Greek god, you know, just shredded. <laughs> Mark you know, one time. Michael they, couldn't lift what Mark could lift. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Except all the gold medal. We got Mark one time. We were going, we were wrong. We're driving somewhere up Pennsylvania. You know, and you can't buy a beer just at a convenience store up there, you know. So we stop off yeah. at some little barbecue place way back in there. And there's Mark eating a plate of ribs. And we walk in. And at the time, they were wanting him to lose weight. You know, he's Mark Henry. You know, he's, you know, he's not going to look like a bodybuilder. He's, yeah. he's the world's strongest man. And when he walks in, he goes, of all people to see. <laughs> I said, so, yeah. we sat down and, so we sat down and joined him. Man, oh my God, good for him, man. He's uh, did he was the uh, did he ever? Is that is that the place? Where's the place out in West Texas that they would eat all the, the big steak and potatoes? Amarillo. That you would. Amarillo. Is that is Amarillo, that what you, the, is that the one? Yeah, Amarillo. Is that the they, one? Uh, did Klondike Bill ate two of them well, one time? All right, it's a seventy-two ounce. And, steak. Yeah, so big the big show couldn't even do it though i mean i mean he was like it was but you had to eat the potato and all he was like yeah but i think mark henry had no problem with that like, did he i mean that's a that's that's yeah. a massive that's that was the big texan in amarillo where, where the folks yeah. were yeah unbelievable man yeah oh man <laughs> what a business uh, huh i know man it's crazy See, you could have gone to goldman sachs and just been a, a billionaire by now instead you've got all these stories and said I, I could have been a ham and egger, but you're right. I could have been a billionaire. You could, <laughs> you, 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 you could have been a John Layfield, Charlie, if you just stayed at Goldman Sachs. Oh, You'd stop had it, the, Jerry. Uh, the golden parachutes. Uh, you well, man, have, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for Miss, you know, Miss Meredith. You know, she has a, a, a cousin or a, or some some type of distant relative that needs a needs a bow. Needs a needs a, a husband. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll have her. I'll have her get right on it. She loves fixing people up. She's still mad at Jerry for the eighty-seven dollars he stiffed us on with the tuxedo <laughs> rental. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll send it to oh, Meredith, man. but I'm not sending. It. I'll send it to Meredith, and she'll triple my money. <laughs> uh, exactly. You'll end, you'll end up owning to Alice Formal Wear. You'll end up owning that place. <laughs> That's right. She always she loves Jerry. She yeah. goes, uh, how's Jerry Briscoe? How's, how's it? it? Doesn't matter. Ask about me. She knows a nice guy when she sees him, right, Charlie? That's right, man. And the Nokies, baby. Uh, Oklahoma, yes. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. So when, when's your state tournaments coming up for your, for your uh It's going to be – it's the um, it's the first weekend of March. 
first week of March. Awesome. Well, yep, best yep. of luck to them, Charlie, man. Hi, and and uh, it's uh, all, always great to catch up with you. You, you know, Thank you. I've known your family forever now, you know, and yeah. uh, including uh, that, uh, that outlaw up in Jersey, Rick Delegato. Uh, what a, what yes, a sir. Rick, 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 just out of the blue will call me every other month or so and yeah. we'll just we'll catch up yeah. and talk yeah. about you and, and talk about things. And what a great guy he is. What a great yeah. family you're from. Uh, and, uh, and what a great state you're from. So we really exactly. appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, man. Have. I appreciate it. Thank Even you though that Texas internet has been the craps today, right, John? I mean, you to admit that. <laughs> Stop uh, it. Is that the Maryland internet or the Texas internet? I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, it'll be the Texas internet. Yeah. Charlie, uh, thank you. Hey, Charlie, thanks for joining us. I, I, hey, no, thanks for having me, guys. I love, I, me and Ron liked you guys when you first came in. We like you to this day. You know, you just, you're just one of the good thank dudes you. that uh, I want to see, see. I want to see succeed. I want to see have happiness. And I want to see your kids yeah. win Olympic uh, gold. I, I, I appreciate it, man. I definitely will. And uh, it, it, and whenever, if you're in town and they're wrestling, man, it, for the amateur, please, I, I, the invite's always there, John. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm coming down yeah. to Texas a lot, you know, to yeah. take care of my mom. Um, so I, yeah. I, I, I told you I'd love to come up and see, see your program. And, and I'd love yeah. to see your kids wrestle. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And then I'll come up. Definitely. Then I'll come out of retirement and put you over there. <laughs> thank you man i appreciate it man i thank you hey, hey listen I, I started my own podcast where uh, I'm, I'm doing amateur and pro wrestling so uh i'd like to have both of you guys on um not if not at the same time but at different times so and that's at the, the wrestling's greatest podcast the host pod so awesome where do you, and where do you get it charlie yeah you can get that it's on twitter it's on facebook it's on uh um we got on it uh pod instagram yeah so we have it we, it's on, on youtube, YouTube yeah yeah, we have YouTube TV as well. Yes, sir. World's greatest podcast. Yeah, world's greatest podcast. Or uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, world's greatest podcast. Yep. Well, awesome. hope, hopefully we can we can arrange one day to have that Sheldon Benjamin on there, and we can we can have yeah. a reunion. We had a Freebird reunion, so I, there's no reason why we can't have a world. Why greatest not? Podcast. That's right. I'd love to do that. And, and uh, and also I got my my first T-shirt out on wrestling pro tees. It's Charlie Haas is not dead because there was an article the other day saying that Charlie Haas. Is, di- is fatally dead, di- died fatally in the ring. And I'm like, that's not true. Go here. So I have a t-shirt saying Charlie Haas is not dead. So, and if we get Sheldon on, he can do a Slim Whitman uh, impersonation. Of- It'd be great. It'd be awesome, man. <laughs> awesome. awesome. And I'll hate him again. Yeah.